Good day everyone, my name is Tony Gwinnett C. Campos, a third year BS in Architecture student. Today I will be tackling the chapter 16 of the book, Jose Rizal, Life, Works, and Writings. Chapter 16 title is In Belgian Brussels, year 1890. In this reporting, today I will be discussing about the two reasons why Rizal left Paris for Brussels, life in Brussels, the articles that Rizal published in La Solidaridad, the new orthography of Tagalog language, the Rizal criticizes Madrid Filipinos for gambling, bad news from home, Presentiment of death, preparation to go home, decision to go to Madrid, to my muse, home, work by Rizal, romance with Petit Jacobi. So, those will be the outlines that I will be discussing today. At first, I will be discussing about the two reasons why Rizal left Paris for Brussels. So, on January 28, 1890, Rizal left Paris for Brussels, cap capital of Belgium. The two reasons is because the cost of living was very high because of the universal exposition. And number two, his social life hampered his literary works. And that work is El Filibusterismo. His friends, including Marcelo H. Del Pilar and Valentin Ventura, were of the belief that he left because he was running away from a girl just as he left London. When he told them that the reason for his leaving Paris was economic because his money was dwindling, Ventura generously invited him to live with him in Paris without pay paying rent. He could not accept Ventura's invitation for he had a high sense of dignity and would not accept charity from any man so yeah those are the two reasons next i will also discuss the timeline where rizal lived in brussels rizal was accompanied by jose albert when he moved to, to brussels they live in a boarding house on 38 Rue Philip Champagne, which was run by two Jacobi sisters, Suzanne and Marie. And we will know more about the Jacobi later on. Uh, later, Albert left the city and was replaced by Jose Alejandro. Jose Alejandro is an engineering student. He is now the new uh, board mate kumbaga, ni Jose Rizal. In Brussels, Rizal was busy writing his second novel, which was a continuation of the Noli Metangere. He was never idle even for an hour. Aside from writing its chapters, he wrote articles for La Solidaridad and letters to his family and friends. He didn't, uh, he didn't waste his time on anything he divided it on his writings la solidaridad letters for his family and also as a physician he also spent time at the medical clinic and as an entertainment recreation for himself he also went to the gymnastic he had gymnastics at the gymnasium and also he target practice and fencing at the armory also the board mate uh, slash roommate of Rizal, Jose Alejandro, he also witnessed Rizal's frugality. Kung sabi saya pa murag ang pagkakuripot ni Rizal. Then, the next, I will also talk about the articles published in La Solidaridad. The first article. Okay. During his sojourn in Brussels, Rizal wrote articles for La Solidaridad in defense of his oppressed people and to point out the evils of Spanish rule in the Philippines. Among these articles which appeared in the patriotic periodical were, first is, A La Defensa or Tu La Defensa. 
It was written on April 30, 1889. This article was basically a reply to an anti-Filipino writing of a Spanish author, Patricio de la Escosura, which was published by La Defensa on March 30, 1889. The second is La Verdad para Todos, in English, The Truth for All. It was published on... It was made on May 31, 1889. It was results defense against the Spanish charges that the native local of officials were ignorant and depraved. The third is Vicente Barantes Teatro Tagalo, made on June 15, 1889. In this article, the Barantes' ignorance on the t- Tagalog theatrical art was exposed by Rizal. And then, the fourth, the fourth, which is the Una Profanation, a profanation, made on July 31, 1889. It was a bitter attack against the friars for denying Christian burial to Mariano Herbosa in Calamba because he was a brother-in-law of Rizal. Herbosa, husband of Lucia, dad, died of cholera on May 23, 1889. Basically, Rizal made this because he was uh, uh, he was uh, angry at the at the friars on why they didn't bury his brother-in-law. The fifth one is Verdades Nuevas, in English is New Truths. It was made on Jul- July 31, I published in, on July 31, 1889. I replied to Vicente Beloc Sanchez, letter published in La Patria, Madrid newspaper on July 4, 1889 which asserted that the granting of reforms in the Philippines would ruin the peaceful and maternal rule of the friars. Six is Crueldad, or in English, Cruelty, August 15, 1889. A brilliant defense of Blumentritt from the scurrilous attacks of his enemy. Seventh is Differentias. Or differences. September 15, 1889. It is a reply to a bias article entitled Old Truths that was published in La Patria on August 14, 1889, which ridiculed those Filipinos who asked for reforms. The eighth is Inconsequencias, Inconsequences, November 30, 1889. A defense of Antonio Luna against the attack of Pablo Mir Diaz in the Barcelona newspaper El Pueblo Soberano. The ninth is Lianto e Risas, Tears and Laughter, November 30, 1889. A denunciation of Spanish racial prejudice against the brown Filipinos. Rizal mentioned in this article how the audience, composed mostly of Spaniards and mestizos, Stop applauding when he received first prize in the liter- in the literary contest in 1880 because of his brown co- color. Basically, this is an article against uh, people being racist because of their color of the Filipinos color. Spaniards being racist, and the tenth one is ingratitudes, January 15, 1890. A reply to Governor General Valeriano Whaler, who, while visiting Calamba, told the people that they should not allow themselves themselves to be deceived by the vain promises of their ungrateful sons. So, those are the ten articles that Rizal published in La Solidaridad. The next topic will be the new orthography of Tagalog language. In spite of his European education and his knowledge of foreign languages, Rizal loved his own native language, the Tagalog language. He was the first to advocate, advocate the Filipinization of its orthography. For instance, we see here in the slide, instead of using C 
for the word salakot, he used K, salakot. And then arrow with the O as the last, as the last letter, he used W, arrow. He used, basically he used Tagalog letters K and W instead of C and O. And as early as in September 1886, when he was in Leipzig, Rizal adopted the Philippinized Tagalog orthography in his Tagalog translations of Schiller's Wilhelm Tell and Andersen's Fairy Tales, and again he used it in his first novel, Noli Me Tangere. He adopted the, the new orthography of Tagalog of Tagalog language in his first novel. And then, when he was sojourning in Brussels, his article entitled Sobre la, la Nueva Orthografía de la Lengua Tagalo, Tagala, the new orthography of the Tagalog language, was published in La Solidaridad on April 15, 1890. In this article, he laid down the rules of the new Tagalog orthography and with modesty and sincerity, he gave the credit of the adoption of this new orthography to Dr. Trinidad H. Pardo de Tavera, the author of the celebration-rated work El Sanskrito in La Lengua Tagala, Sanskrit in the Tagalog language, which was published in Paris, 1884. I put this on record, wrote Rizal, so that when the history of this orthography is traced, which is already being adopted by the enlightened Tagalist, that was is that what is Caesar's be given to Caesar. The innovation is due solely to Dr. Pardo de Tavera's studies on Tagalismo. I was one of its most zealous propagandists. And the next Topic is Rizal criticizes Madrid Filipinos for gambling. In Brussels, Rizal, Rizal received news from Juan Luna and Valentin Ventura that the Filipinos in Spain were destroying the good name of the Philippines, their nation, by gambling too much. These two compatriots in Paris urged him to do something about it. Accordingly, Rizal wrote to M. H. Del Pilar on May 28, 1890 to remind the Filipinos in Madrid that they did not come to Europe to gamble but to work for their fatherland's freedom. His letter runs as follows. Luna in Paris complains of the gambling of the Filipinos in Madrid, so does Ventura. They said that, according to news from the Philippines, the parents are very much disgusted. I am afraid we are serving the friar scheme. There is nothing at home to remind them that the Filipino does not come to Europe to gamble and amuse himself, but to work for his liberty and for the dignity of his race. It is not necessary to leave the Philippines to gamble, for there they already gamble very much. If we who are called upon to do something, if we in whom the poor people place in their modest hopes spend our time in these things precisely when the years of youth should be employed in something more noble and lofty for the very reason that youth is noble and lofty, I fear much that we are fighting for a useless illusion and that instead of being worthy of liberty, we are worthy of slavery. That is my favorite quotation from his letter uh, when he said I fear much that we are fighting for a useless illusion and that instead of being worthy of liberty we are worthy of slavery and Filipinos being so uh, um, the term uh, maybe <laughs> stupid they just they just got angry too Rizal and even made fun of him. They made a name for Rizal. Uh, they derisively called him Papa or Pope instead of Pepe, because Pepe was Rizal's nickname. The gambling Filipinos in Madrid were angry when they learned of Rizal's moralizing. And 
Rizal said, I appeal to the patriotism of all Filipinos to give the Spanish people proof that we are superior to our misfortune and that neither are we capable of being brutalized nor can our noble sentiments be defend, defined with the corruption of customs. And yet, the, Filip the Filipino said uh, the contrary of being patriotist, of being a patriotist. And then the next... The next topic I'll be discussing is about the bad news from home. Letters from home with which Rizal received in Brussels worried him. The Colombo agrarian trouble was getting worse. The Dominican Hacienda continually raised the land rents until such time that the father of Rizal refused to pay his rent. Also, the other people who was inspired or other tenants was inspired by Rizal's father, they also refused to pay the unreasonable, unreasonable rents. The Dominican order filed a suit in court to dispossess the Rizal family of their lands in Colombo. Meanwhile, the tenants, including the Rizal family, were persecuted. Pasiano, Antonio Lu Lopez, and Silvestre Ubaldo. These are uh, brother-in-laws of Rizal. They were deported to Mindoro. And also, Manuel T. Hidalgo, another brother-in-law of his, was also banished for a second time to Bohol. The sad news from home depressed Rizal. His heart bled to know the sorrowful plight of his parents, brother, and brothers-in-law. And then the next topic is about the presentiment of, of death. During Rizal's despair in Brussels, he was thinking about his family being persecuted. And because of his despair, he had bad dreams. Bad dreams and it, it made him restless. He was not superstitious, but he feared that he would not live long. He was not afraid to die, but he wanted to finish his second novel because he, before he went to his grave. This morbid presentiment of early death was divulged by him to M. H. Del Pilar in a letter from Brussels dated June 11, 1890. So I will just present Marcelo H. Del Pilar's letter here. And and then, so the presentiment of that is it was like another term for it was like a prophecy of own results own prophecy of his own death, but he was not like really superstitious about it. But he didn't want to die. He just wanted to finish his his novel before he went to the grave. The next topic is the preparation to go home. In the face of the suffering which afflicted his family, Rizal planned to go home. He could not stay in Brussels writing a book while, his, while knowing that his uh, family, his friends, were persecuted in the Philippines. And upon hearing the, that Graciano Lopez Jaina was planning to go to Cuba, he wrote to Ponce on July 9. 1890, opposing Grishano's plan of action. He said that Grishano should not go to Cuba to die of yellow fever. Instead, he ought to go to the Philippines to allow himself to be killed in defense of his ideals. Adding, Rizal said, we have only once to die, and if we do not die well, we lose an opportunity which will not again be presented to us. Then, he sent a letter to Ponce, dated July 18. 1890, he expressed his determination to go home as follows. I will just uh, put the letter here in the slide. Uh, you can just see the letter here in the slide. And then all his friends, including Blue Mentreat, Jose Ma Maria Basa, and Ponce, were horrified by Rizal's plan to return to the Philippines. They warned him of the danger that awaited him at home. And then the next topic decision to go to Madrid 
Rizal received a letter from Prashana and suddenly changed his mind. He received a letter from Prashana which related that they lost the case against the Dominicans in Manila, but they appealed it to the Supreme Court in Spain. Hence, a lawyer was needed to handle it in Madrid. He wrote to M. H. Del Pilar on June 20, 1890, retaining the latter's service as lawyer. Then he informed he was going to Madrid. And the next is the poem To My Muse, 1890. This poem is actually published in La Solidaridad using the pen name Laong Laan. It was written by Jose Rizal by in 5th, December 15, 1890. The question, why did Rizal wrote this poem? It is because of his disappointment over the half-hearted attitude of the Filipino expatriates working for the reforms in Spain. Also, this poem expresses bitterness over the troubles in Calamba. So the next topic is Romance with Petit Jacobi. Petit Jacobi is, uh, as I have mentioned before from the first topic, this, this lady is actually a niece of Rizal's landladies, the Jacobis. Two things, uh, two things brought some measure of cheer to the despondent Rizal as he was preparing for his trip, trip to Madrid. First was the summertime festival of Belgium, which was celebrated in carnival style with colorful costumes, fantastic floats, and many days of merriment of merriment. Second was his romance with Petite Jacobi. Rizal was so charming and dignified, a gentleman that Petite Suzanne was attracted to him. He was lonely in a strange country, and Leonor River was so far away. Naturally, being a normal young man, he found certain bliss in the company of a pretty Belgian girl. He might have flirted with Petite Suzanne, but he could not stoop low to a deceptive amorous, amorous relationship. Like other women, Segunda Catigbac, Orang Valenzuela, Leonor Rivera, Jose San, Getty Beckett, Consuelo Ortiga e Perez, and Danelli Busted, Suzanne fell in love with Rizal. And she cried when he left toward the end of July 1890 for Madrid, stopping for a few days in Paris. Although Rizal was in faraway Madrid, far, in faraway Madrid, Suzanne could not forget him. She wrote to him in French this letter. And I will just, and it is, it will be just presented here in the presentation. So. Uh, it is a letter for a farewell a letter as far oh yeah a letter for a farewell and, and that's it for the chapter 16 life of Rizal in the Brussels in Belgium and Brussels thank you everyone for listening and God bless